Welcome everyone, this is a self-elected Ape of the Year once again with a quick uh, loadout tutorial for you guys because uh, I was very frequently asked uh, what kind of ammunition I am using in the 109 and uh, because the uh, different kinds of ammunitions are only written in German at least for the 109 even in the English installation I think this might be a very useful uh, tutorial and a highly needed tutorial because many people don't know what those German uh, uh, descriptions actually mean. Uh, on top of that I will make a loadout tutorial for the Spitfire as well. I've asked some uh, people of the ACG group on the red side which kind of uh, ammunition they would recommend. So uh, this is going to be also implemented in this video. And on top of that I will uh, show you some actual clips where I'm uh, shooting at a Spitfire or a 109 so you will see the actual effects of each kind of ammunition and therefore can choose for yourself which kind of ammunition you would prefer. So, I'm going to show you uh, my loadout first and I'm going to describe all the different kinds of ammunitions uh, and I'm going to do this for uh, the E1 and for the E4. Um, the E1 is going to be the first one because here we will see uh, all the different kinds of ammunitions that we uh, have for the MGs and um, I'm going to skip out the E3 because I completely dislike the E3 and uh, in the E3 I have just the same loadout for the MGs as for the E1 and the cannon ammunition in the E3 is just the default one in, in my uh, setting. So, first of all I'm going to explain this whole thing right here. Um, we have slot 1 uh, to slot number 4 so 1 and 2 are the two guns in the nose of the uh, 109, uh, so the MGs. And uh, number 3 and number 4 are the two cannons in the left wing in number 3 and in the right wing in number 4. So below that we have the, uh, the ammunition that we actually chose. And on the right right here we have uh, all the different kinds of ammunitions that we can choose from. So. Um, what you want to do is just pick your ammunition, whatever it is, hit this button, add, and then uh, when you're ready and you uh, chose your intervals of bullets that you want to, you push save as and you will have it saved as this um, setting for this specific plane. Um, first of all, um, I'm going to show you my conversions that I choose and that I recommend. Um, for the nose MGs, I have a horizontal conversion of 500 meters, and for the vertical conversion setting, I have a setting of 400 meters. The reason here is that uh, the nose uh, MGs, of course, are pretty close to each other, so there is not much uh, conversion setting actually needed. Uh, those guns actually could just shoot parallel to each other, and it wouldn't make much of a difference, because they are only uh, maybe 30 centimeters. Uh, away from each other. Um, the vertical conversions is always 400 meters for me because I found out that this is just a very good conversion setting to compensate for the bullet drop. Um, there's also some other uh, kind of tutorial somewhere on YouTube, I think it was done by Faber or somebody, uh, that explains very well why you want to, uh, why the setting of 400 meters is very well suited. Um, Let's go b uh, further to the uh, wing cannons or MGs in this uh, specific plane. Here I have a setting of 300 meters and uh, 300 meters is just for me my personal preference. I just found out that I have the uh, most success with this uh, setting. Many pilots have a setting of uh, maybe 150 to 200 meters so many people have a lower uh, setting for the conversions, the horizontal conversions but uh, I just found out that for me uh, I just want to have a little bit far conversions. Mm, I don't know why. On the one hand I just hit better with this conversions and on the other hand I have a rational uh, reasoning behind it because um, after the point of conversions where the bullets actually are hitting each other or meet each other um, they are going to spread and divide after this point of conversion. So if you have a very uh, low uh, setting for the conversions, you are uh, restricted to shooting at targets that are very close to you. Of course you are going to be the most effective when shooting at targets that are very close to you and uh, specifically in the, uh, in the uh, conversions for the cannons, maybe a lower conversions would be uh, 
would make sense, uh, but uh, I just want to have the possibility to also shoot at somebody who is a little bit far away. So this is the reason why I choose 300 meters. Many people are uh, going to be disagreeing and telling me that uh, a lower conversion is better, which might be true for them. I'm just most effective with this one. But this is one uh, thing that you should find out for yourself, what you really prefer. But the vertical conversions of 400 meters is generally a very good setting. So, now let's uh, take a look. At first I'm going to explain all the different kinds of ammunitions and what they actually are. And uh, I will show you some clips where you will actually see how the effects of the each kind of ammunition uh, yeah, are. So, first of all we have the SMK. Spitzgeschoss mit Stahlkern, and um, this this kind of bullet is just a pointed uh, bullet with an iron core, and um, it's more or less a completely normal kind of ammunition. And we will take a look now how it actually works. So right here we are in the mission builder. This is a mission edited uh, by Pity. He just spawned in a Spitfire and. Uh, we can test our ammunition. I took only uh, the SMK bullets right here and we see that uh, the SMK bullet is capable of doing uh, damage to the internal parts like the radiator and uh, in just a moment we will also see that it's also very effective overall no matter where you hit the enemy plane. Right there I hit the, the wing and the fuselage and you see lots of metal coming off of the uh, enemy plane. So uh, this kind of bullet does not really depend to hit a specific spot, but it's also uh, very uh, capable of penetrating the uh, the radiator and stuff like that. So the next one is the SMKH Spitzgeschoss mit Stahlkern hart. And this is the same uh, pointed bullet with an iron core, but in this case the iron core is a little bit harder than in the other one. This means that the uh, bullet is not going to um, divide as much after the impact, and it has more penetration power and does smaller holes. We are going to take a look at this kind of ammunition. So with the SMKH you really depend on hitting the center mass of the plane so you want to go for either the uh, radiator or uh, the, the engine or the oil cooler on the left. So uh, if you are managing to get hits on the right spot um, the SMKH is a very powerful ammunition and you won't need uh, very many hits. But if you hit uh, the wing or the fuselage itself, uh, the ammunition is just going to go through like butter and won't take a lot of metal out of the enemy plane, so you won't really damage the uh, aerodynamics of, of the enemy. And in just a moment I will get some additional hits on the center mass of the plane. See that the radiator is already damaged there. And right here you hear that the engine sounds damaged, so this uh, Spitfire is going down. So SMKH is very powerful if you hit the right spot. So, below that we have uh, the SMK with tracer effects. The upper one is yellow, the lower one is white. And um, I'm not going to show you the effects of this kind of bullets. Uh, I'm just going to explain one quick thing here. You really do not want to put too many tracers in your, uh, in in your loadout, because uh, the tracers are going to warn, of course, the enemy. And for example, in my nose MGs, I don't have any traces at all, because uh, the the line of fire of these uh, guns is going to be pretty predictable. Um, another important thing is that you are going to gather a lot of attention. So uh, at first, people, uh, experienced people, are going to recognize the different colors of the of the traces, and they will uh, realize if you are a friendly or an enemy just by your traces. Uh, on the other hand, um, if you have a very very big amount of traces, uh, it's just a real eye catcher. Everybody within uh, five miles is going to see very well that you are there firing at somebody if you put too many traces in there. Um, also, traces don't do as much damage as uh, ammunition without tracer effect. So everything combined, I just would recommend not putting too many traces in your loadout. 
Of course, a little bit of tracer is uh, no failure. We will uh, see this later in my loadout too. So, let's take a look at the next kind of ammunition. This one is the SMK <coughs> SMK um, Übungsmunition mit Zerleger. This is uh, once again this typical uh, bullet, but uh, has an uh, exploding effect added to it. And uh, Übungsmunition means training ammunition. And um, the reason that it's called training ammunition is uh, not that it is a very ineffective kind of bullet or something like that. The reasoning behind this is the following. Um, this ammunition was used um, in a scenario where a glider was carried by a motorized plane and this glider would be the target for the student, for the uh, for the young pilot who was going to train his shooting a little bit. And uh, he would shoot at this glider with this kind of Übungsmunition, with this kind of training ammunition. And uh, to make sure that the carrying plane in front of this glider was safe from the, uh, from the, uh, from the shooting, uh, they would add uh, this exploding effect. So this uh, ammunition explodes on, on impact or after 500 meters. And because of that the plane in front is safe because the bullets are not going to reach the front plane before exploding. So. Uh, this is not an ineffective kind of ammunition, but it's a very, very effective one, which uh, is very well suited in order to destroy enemy uh, control devices like ailerons or the rudder or something like that. And uh, I would really recommend putting some uh, slots with this ammunition. It's one of my favorite kinds of ammunitions, because it's basically uh, MG ammunition that behaves a little bit like a cannon. But on the other hand, it's not very. It doesn't have very much penetrating power, and it's um, not very well suited in order to destroy an engine or uh, to get something like the radiator or something like that. We will take a look at the ammunition now. So with the uh, training ammunition you uh, want to go for the ailerons or for the rudder or for the uh, devices that uh, control the pitch movement of the plane and I always try to uh, aim for the for the uh, tail end of the of the enemy plane first because if you do some damage to the control devices there, uh, you have good chances of uh, t completely crippling the maneuverability of the enemy plane. And uh, right here, taking off his aileron and the rudder too. So from now on, he cannot really use its, uh, the plane anymore, and he's going down. So uh, this kind of ammunition is very useful. Uh, to do uh, this set damage to the uh, control devices, but um, it doesn't have a lot of penetrating power and therefore you won't really damage the engine or something like this. So having uh, a loadout of only training ammunition is uh, most certainly not the right thing to do. But as you see right here, uh, it's very useful in order to make the enemy plane unmaneuverable. Now we will uh, do the same thing again, but this time with the window open, in order to hear the impacts a little bit better. So, the last useful kind of ammunition that you can use is the PMK, Phosphor Geschoss mit Stahlkern. And this is just uh, uh, an ammunition with a phosphor effect. So this is a very well suited ammunition in order to set enemy engines on fire and something like that. 
we will take a look at this ammunition now too. So if you use a phosphor round you uh, want to go for the center mass of the plane too but uh, other than the hard uh, SMKH for example uh, you do not really depend on hitting the uh, center mass uh, because uh, if the phosphor effect of the round is not happening it more or less <coughs> works just as if it was a normal SMK bullet and uh, but if possible you want to go for the center mass and you see it uh, it's very effective at damaging the radiator or something like this and right here I get very good hits on the enemy engine and uh, right here you see that uh, the engine is burning so this pilot has to bail and he's going down very quickly because of this uh, phosphor effect. So, and the last one is the so called B ammunition, it's a Beobachtungspatrone mit Zerleger. And uh, this is an observatory round, and this one is a uh, real training ammunition in, in of all those kinds of ammunitions. So, this ammunition right here does next to no damage, only in very rare occasions this is going to uh, set something on fire but uh, it's more or less just a fire crack around and this ammunition uh, will show you where you are actually hitting the enemy plane because it's uh, doing some kind of small explosion with a very really bright flash and um, if you want to train with somebody I would recommend choosing this kind of ammunition because uh, it doesn't know damage and if you and another guy you are meeting on a server with for example infinite ammunition enabled you can um, shoot at each other for a very long time and you don't have to restart all the time so it's a very good ammunition to to do some training with but don't put it in your ammo belt uh, because it's just a waste of slots uh, you should really take some effective ammunition of this uh, instead of this one so let's take a look at uh, how this ammunition is going to to be uh, working. Right here you will see uh, that the uh, Beobachtungspatrone is showing you very well where you are actually hitting the enemy plane. In this case it's just another 109. And um, you see that there are no chunks of metal coming off or any other kind of damage happening to the plane. And uh, this is the reason why you can use it so well for training purposes. So, and now we are going to take a look at the loadout that I choose, or I chose. So, um, at first, um, it does no, not make any difference how many slots you are actually taking right here. So, uh, I could have taken uh, fewer slots right here uh, and would have gotten the same amount of ammunition. So, the amount of ammunition is not going to be affected by the amount of slots that you are actually taking right here. This is just changing the interval and I just have this longer interval right here even if I'm choosing uh, three in a row of the same kind of ammunition right here because I just wanted to make sure that it's going to overlap. So I got my little system right here. I'm not telling you that you need to use this kind of system. You can think of your own. But uh, what you really want to, uh, what I would really recommend is taking mostly these three kinds of ammunitions. So the normal kind of ammunition, the one on top, the SMK, it's just a completely normal kind of bullet. Um, then the uh, Phosphor Munition, the PMK right here, um, and the Übungsmunition, the, the uh, training ammunition. So uh, those three kinds of bullets are the most effective and a good mixture of these three bullets is what I would recommend in, in the MG. I have a little bit of the, uh, of the hard, of the a little bit harder m ammunition added in, but I don't uh, use uh, very much of it because uh, I just feel like uh, you really need to be uh, on the six o'clock of an enemy in order to make this uh, kind of ammunition very effective because it's only really effective if you hit the engine or the uh, yeah the, the, the center mass of the enemy plane and if you for example hit the wings or any other structure uh, this ammunition just doesn't do as much damage it's just going through the wing and doesn't do a big hole so it's not really affecting the aerodynamics or anything and because this ammunition is only for this one scenario 
when you are on the dead six of the enemy, uh, I don't put as much any ammunition of this kind in my uh, loadout. Um, in wing number three, in the in the one to the left, I have one tracer ammunition in there. Um, but uh, like I said, don't put too much of it in there because it's only uh, it's just a waste. Uh, but of course, a little bit of tracer ammunition in the wings is no uh, is no failure, because uh, you really want to see where your bullets are going sometimes, and also you want to uh, show in some uh, situations you want to build up some pressure on the enemy, or you want to uh, help out a friend who is uh, being followed by an enemy, and uh, there having some traces is a very useful thing. So that's everything about the. Uh, about the MG loadout that I have, like I said, it's basically just a lot of phosphor ammunition, a lot of uh, training ammunition, and a lot of normal ammunition. So one third of each kind. And you want to switch it up a little bit in order to get uh, uh, an overlapping effect for the different guns, and put in a little bit of this hard ammunition too, but not too much, I would recommend. But uh, of course you saw all the effects of the different kind of bullets now, and you can also choose for yourself. Now we are going to see uh, how it looks when we combine all the different effects of the different kind of bullets and also have some traces in there. Basically what you uh, saw right here is that he was already done after the first uh, burst of bullets hit him and um, you see that with the right mixture of bullets uh, the MG ammunition can be uh, just as deadly as the cannon ammunition so getting the right mixture is the way to go. So now we are going to take a look at the E4. And the E4 is, uh, like I said, uh, a very, very uh, easy plane to choose uh, the loadout for. Just because uh, the decision with the cannons is pretty easy to make. Uh, first of all, right here we see uh, in the in the nose MGs I have more or less the same setting: uh, a lot of phosphor, a lot of training ammunition, and a little bit of normal ammunition, a little bit of the hard ammunition too. And now let's go uh, to the cannon. So let's take a look at those different kind of uh, cannon effects, what we have right here. I'm not going to show uh, lots of videos here, but uh, I'm going to tell you what the different kinds of ammunitions actually do. So uh, the one uh, on top is uh, more or less um, a very well suited ammunition uh, regarding the penetration effect. It's very useful in order to destroy engines because it does not explode, it stays in... Uh, it's just one big bullet. Below that we have another uh, kind of... it's more or less the same bullet kind, but it has a uh, phosphor effect added to it. So those two... those upper two uh, bullets, uh, they do not explode, but have a lot of penetration power, and this one, the second one with the phosphor effect, I think is the best kind of cannon ammunition in order to uh, destroy um, engines and set engines on fire and maybe if you are attacking a bomber or something like that. Below that we have two kind of uh, uh, bullets that have um, some kind of a uh, frag grenade effect. Um, those are more or less little grenades that you're shooting at the enemy. Those are going to explode on impact and their destruction power is desi designed around the uh, fragment uh, effect that it's producing a lot of fragments. Um, right here we have uh, the same kind of ammunition once again um, but also it does not explode. So those two middle ones are the ones that are exploding and uh, those upper ones are the ones that are not exploding and here we have another one that's not exploding 
and the one that is really the best one in my opinion is the one on the bottom it's the uh, two centimeter Minengeschoss Patrone mit Zerleger this means uh, the effect of this round is designed on the pressure wave that it's going to produce and not on the fragments the, all those other exploding uh, um, cannon shells are designed around being more or less a little frag grenade uh, this one is producing just a very very heavy pressure wave and uh, the way that it's working is it's going to penetrate the enemy structure and then it's going to explode in a big pressure wave and this is going to rip uh, parts of metal off the enemy plane and this is by far the best uh, kind of ammunition that you can choose because it's uh, just much more effective than the fragments of, of the other ones but you don't want to put only Minengeschoss Patrone in your loadout but at first let's take a look now at the effects of this kind kind of ammunition and why it is so effective so if you uh, try to hit the enemy with the Minengeschoss uh, you really want to go for the uh, wings because uh, on the wing surface uh, this kind of uh, grenade effect does the most damage and you see right here that even uh, when I hit him uh, very good uh, with the Minengeschoss, he's still in the air, but he's not maneuverable anymore. So uh, this round is uh, very well suited in order to cripple the enemy plane, uh, but it's not necessarily uh, meaning that he's going to go down immediately. So uh, if you have only Minengeschoss Patron in your ammunition belt, uh, quite often you will need a lot of hits before he is finally going to go down. So, um, now that we saw that this uh, Minengeschoss Patron is extremely effective and does very big holes, um, you also have to know that you don't want a loadout of only Minengeschoss Patron, because uh, in very many occasions you are not going to do damage to, uh, to the engine or to the, um, to the radiator or inner structures um, as you do with the other kinds of uh, frag grenade um, kinds of uh, explosive rounds. Um, now we're going to take a look at my loadout. So in the uh, gun number three I have uh, two-thirds Minengeschoss Patrone, like I said it's overall the most effective one, and one-third in the left wing is going to be the Brandsprenggranat Patrone Leuchtspur. And uh, this is uh, this one. And uh, I chose this one because I just feel like it's uh, a very effective round and also I want the, the tracer effect. I want to have one uh, projectile in each uh, interval that shows me where I'm actually hitting because uh, I don't want to waste too much cannon ammunition because it's of course very val valuable in uh, ammunition. Now we're going to take a look at the uh, gun number four. Also here I have two-thirds Minengeschoss Patrone and this one is the one uh, with the lots of penetration power the second one from the top um, with the phosphor effect so this round doesn't do a tracer and it also doesn't explode but it has a very high uh, penetration power and a very uh, effective uh, power against engines and stuff like that Right here you saw that uh, if everything is combined in the right way uh, and you have the perfect MG setting as well as the perfect uh, cannon setting you are able to take down enemies in uh, one single burst very effectively and very fast and you don't need uh, to waste so many bullets. So this was everything for the cannons. Like I said in the E3 I just would keep the uh, the default setting for the cannons and put in the same MG 
uh, settings that I have. Um, the reason that I don't like the E3 is that you cannot take Minengeschoss Patrone, so the very effective round does not uh, fit into the uh, cannon of the E3. And uh, also the trajectory, the way that the gun shoots is very strange. I'm, I just don't seem to hit a lot of with the E3. On top of that it's a very heavy plane and still it doesn't have a very powerful engine. So if I'm uh, able to choose between the E3 or the E1, I'm always going to pick the E1. I just like it a lot better. So that was everything uh, that we have uh, for the E4. And now we are going to take a look at the Spitfire. Okay, now let's take a look at the, uh, the Spitfire setting. So. Um, I've asked some people of the uh, ACG group uh, on the red side what kind of ammunition they would recommend for the uh, Spitfire and uh, this is what they came up with and it's uh, at first uh, you want to have uh, a horizontal conversion that is not too far in the Spitfire so uh, something between uh, maybe 130 meters to 200 meters should be a good setting um, I have uh, uh, horizontal conversions of 200 meters now and my vertical conversions of 400 meters once again. Um, but I'm not a real expert on, on this uh, thing, so I don't have lots of experience, but this should be kind of a good uh, conversion setting. Maybe you disagree. You can write it in the comments, maybe. Um, but what I was told is uh, that the default setting of the Spitfire is not uh, that bad, but you want to change it just a little bit. And uh, what I've specifically changed from the default setting is that I have uh, this one slot on the uh, completely left position. Uh, so this should be the one to, to the completely left, the gun. Um, I have made an interval where I have uh, the three kinds of ammunition that uh, should be the most effective and only one tracer. And this is going to be the only tracer for the same uh, reasoning as always. Um, because in the, in the default loadout there are lots of guns completely equipped with the tracer ammunition and I don't think that this is uh, a clever thing to do. I've also explained, I've already explained why. So. Um, no, uh, first let's take a look at the different kinds of ammunitions and I was told uh, that three kinds of ammunitions from all those uh, are uh, really uh, the best ones. Uh, the first one is the um, third from the from the top, uh, it's a Mark 7. It's a completely normal kind of ammunition um, but uh, seems to be a very effective one. Um, then we have uh, the uh, armor piercing round right here, it's a fourth round from the bottom and uh, the uh, uh, Brandgeschoss uh, the Wild MK uh, uh, Mark 6 set. Um, this is a very good uh, round to set enemy engines on fire or the, the plane anywhere. Um, then the armor piercing round and the Mark 7. Those three uh, kinds of rounds uh, I was told are the most effective for the Spitfire and um, in the first slot I have uh, once again uh, those three ammunition types and then I have one uh, tracer ammunition and this is the tracer ammunition uh, the, th the third slot from the bottom which also is a, is a round that uh, sets the enemy plane on fire very well so uh, this is going to be uh, my special slot on the completely left position where I have uh, the uh, tracer in uh, and every other gun I just have one kind of ammunition but I have a mixture of different bullets so um, right here you see okay this is the, M the Mark 7 uh, Mark 7 again then the D wild ammunition the incendiary round or how is it called then we have the ammo piercing round then we have the Mark 7 again then we have another armor piercing round, then the D wild again, and that's it. So uh, those three kinds of bullets, uh, divide them and get a good mixture of them and don't put too many tracers in there. So right here you see that only every seventh bullet is going to be one tracer because of this interval that I created. So um, 
maybe some people are going to disagree. Uh, like I said, I've asked some other people, this is the information they gave to me, and I hope it's a good uh, setting. Uh, if you disagree in any way, uh, you can write it in the comments. Uh, I also would be very interested in your imp opinions. Uh, maybe you are a pilot on the red side and you have a more effective kind of uh, setting. Um, so write it in the comments if you ha disagree. And uh, one last, just one last uh, information. Right uh, here, the one on the completely uh, bottom of all the different kinds of ammunition is the uh, Beobachtungspatrone, so the observ observatory, observatory round once again. And uh, this one is uh, the same as in the uh, 109. It's uh, the training ammunition that doesn't do any damage. So make sure not to put too many, uh, <laughs> don't put this ammunition in your belt. Um, I had this once happening and I really wondered why I'm not doing any damage to the 109s, so remember that. So uh, I hope this helped you once again a little bit and uh, i see you in the next tutorial. Bye.